called Troll Hunter. Spoilers ahead. Watch out and take care. At the beginning of the movie, three Norwegian friends, namely Thomas, Johanna, and Kale, are in a car. They study at the Volda University College and are about to make a documentary about recent bear attacks happening in the town as a college project. Kale is the cameraman responsible for shooting all the footage of their study. The three drive to the site where a bear's dead body has been found and interview local hunters. Interestingly, all the hunters have the same comment. They claim that the bear tracks look odd and made up and assume that the head of the Norwegian Wildlife Board, Finn Haugen, is hiding something. The hunters also share their mutual hatred for a fellow hunter named Hans, whom all of them are suspicious of. The comments make the students' documentary more interesting, so they decide to do more research on Hans. They find out that Hans lives in a campground and interview his neighbor. According to the neighbor, Hans stays out most of the night and doesn't return till sunrise. The group waits for him to return home that day. When they finally meet him, they ask for permission to go with him on one of his night adventures. However, Hans strictly denies the idea and asks them to go away. The trio notices marks from a potential bear attack on Hans's car and films it. They are adamant about finding out what Hans does at night, so they wait in their car nearby his van until it gets dark. At night, Hans gets into his car and drives away as the group follows him. They drive behind his car the whole night and see him board a ferry the next day. The group decides to get on the ferry too. When they reach the destination, they again follow him to a hotel. Finally, at night, they see him get into his car and drive away. The trio knows this is their chance to find out what he is doing, so they follow him closely. However, they lose him after reaching a gate that says that further entrance is prohibited, but the sign doesn't stop the group as they open the gate and go inside, knowing that Hans is in there too. They reach a dark and quiet forest and get out of the car to look for the hunter. The strangely quiet forest unsettles the group, but they do not stop the pursuit. All of a sudden, a loud screech is heard and a bright light flashes nearby. The group freezes in their tracks, too scared to go check what it is. Just then, a terrified Hans approaches them hastily and asks them to run away. The group starts to run without questioning him. Some unknown entity is following them. However, the college students do not know what. The unknown creature almost catches Thomas and injures him in the process, but the group manages to run away in Hans's car. Hans is quiet throughout the journey, but surprisingly accepts when the group asks to join him for a hunt. He then explains that the entity that followed them earlier is a mythological creature from Scandinavian folklore called trolls. Trolls live in isolated rocks, mountains, or caves. Hans describes them as ugly and slow-witted creatures. They always come out at night because the light turns them into rocks. The trolls are anti-Christianity and can smell the blood of people who believe in Christianity from afar. Hans finally confesses that he isn't a bear hunter, but a troll hunter. There is a massive light mounted on his car, which he uses to turn the trolls into stone, killing them. The group doesn't believe Hans' story, but agrees to go with him on an adventure. The following night, Hans takes the group on a troll hunt with him. Before leaving, he makes them rub trolls' smell on their body, so the trolls wouldn't smell humans. Hans carries a flash gun that shoots out forceful UV rays, and they finally make their way towards the forest. Later, Hans gets a call from someone who asks him to get a troll's blood sample. After walking for a while, he asks the group to stop at a place. He plans to bring out the trolls from their hidings, so he leaves the group and goes further into the woods alone. As the trio waits for Hans to return, they start believing that Hans was just making up stories. But suddenly, a loud growl is heard. The trees start shaking, and a massive three-headed creature emerges from between them. The group is terrified and starts running towards their car while the troll pursues them. They finally reach the car, but the troll arrives there while following their smell. Thankfully, Hans is ready for the creature and flashes it with the light mounted on his car. The creature immediately turns into stone, surprising the group. Thomas, Johanna, and Kale are excited to have found such a brilliant being and believe that they will be famous overnight because of the camera footage. Hans, however, is mad at the group for not telling him that they are followers of Christianity. That is why the troll could smell and follow them. However, the trio insists that none of them are Christian. 
Hans finally reveals that he doesn't get paid enough for the hunts and doesn't want to put his life in danger anymore. He wants to expose the truth about trolls to the world, and that is why he agreed to bring them here. The following morning, the head of the Norwegian Wildlife Board, Finn, arrives at the scene. The group gets to know that Finn actually works for the Troll Security Service, or TSS. The Norwegian government doesn't want the world to know about the creature's existence, so they have formed a secret committee, TSS, to solve any problems related to trolls. Hans is an official troll hunter who has been appointed to kill trolls who come close to humans. Hence, to hide the deaths of the trolls, they cover it with bear attack stories. Every news article about the bear attacks till now has been a cover-up for some troll's attack. Hans reveals that for the past few weeks, trolls have been more aggressive than usual, and the TSS wants to find out the reason. That is why they asked to collect a troll's blood sample last night. But unfortunately, Hans was unsuccessful. So, he wants to go for a hunt again, today. Finn realizes that the students are filming the whole interaction and warns them that they will not be allowed to keep the footage, but the warning doesn't stop the trio. At night, they go to a different location to hunt the creature. When they reach there, Hans uses a sheep as bait to attract the trolls. The idea works, and after a while, a different kind of troll appears and starts devouring the sheep. Hans dresses up in a metal suit and gets a syringe. He then bravely approaches the creature to try to get his blood samples. Hans manages to get the blood but angers the troll in the process. It attacks Hans and easily overpowers him. It even tries to eat the man, but the metallic suit resists it. Hans plays dead, making the troll leave. The trio approaches him and helps him up. Hans quickly follows the troll and kills him by flashing his light. The next day, they take the blood samples to the lab to get them tested and find out they will get the result after some days. The group then leaves for another mission together. They notice several fallen trees and figure it is the work of a troll. They follow the troll's footsteps and reach an abandoned mine. But before they can exit the mine, a family of trolls enters, blocking their way. The group is beyond terrified, especially the cameraman Kale, who is shivering in fear. He's not scared. He's just a film student and knows that camera shake makes everything better. He confesses that he believes in Christianity, making the group more nervous. Meanwhile, the trolls catch Kale's scent and attack the group. They use the UV lights to somehow get out of the mine, but Kale is dragged in by the creatures. Thomas and Johanna sit down on the ground, unable to process their friend's death. They take his broken camera and go back to Hans's trailer. After some days, they hire a new Muslim cameraman, not sure how the creature will react to her smell. Finn calls Hans again, this time to assign him a task to kill the most dangerous troll of them all, called the Jotnar, who is easily 50 to 100 meters tall. Hans knows this troll will be the hardest to kill, so he upgrades his van with sharp metals to keep it away. The group travels to the mountains to look for the troll. On their pursuit, they get a call from the lab who reveals that the trolls have rabies. That is why they have been overly aggressive over the past month. The group remembers that Thomas was bitten when he first encountered the troll, so they fear he might have rabies too. Thomas claims he will get tested once they get back. Just then, they see the Jotnar troll making its way towards their van. Unfortunately, the van's mounted lights stop working just then. Hans thinks of a plan and starts singing a Christian hymn, confusing the troll and attracting it towards him. They take this opportunity to drive away. After a while, Hans manages to fix the lights. They drive right out from under the troll's leg and finally manage to flash it with the lights. The troll turns into stone and crumbles to the ground, and the group is relieved. Thomas keeps the hard drive with the footage of the documentary with him. Just then, Finn and his men arrive and try snatching the camera and the hard drive from them. Thomas frantically snatches them both and runs away, leaving his friends behind. After a while, he reaches a road and sees a truck driving his way. The scene cuts as the screen goes black. An epilogue tells us that no one has ever heard from the students since the incident, but we can assume that someone from the truck took the footage from Thomas and leaked them to the press. With no options left, Norway's Prime Minister confesses about the troll's existence during a press meeting. At the end of the movie, the whole world knows about the trolls. Now we just have to send someone after Bigfoot. Subscribe for more videos like this, turn on notifications, and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.